Hey everyone, this is Dylan, and today I'm going to be doing the final episode review of WandaVision. So this is episode 9. It was released on March 5th, 2021. And it stars Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maximoff, or the Scarlet Witch, Paul Bettany as Vision, and Katherine Hahn as Agatha Harkness. Alright, let's get right into what this episode was about. So this episode picks up directly after the events of episode 8. So we see in episode, at the end of episode 8, the twins have little, like, magic collars around their neck, and Agatha is has a hold of them and she's floating above so she basically in this episode it starts off with her floating down the magic disappearing and then Wanda telling the twins to go into the house and go to their bedrooms because this is going to be a fight between Wanda and Agatha. So we find out that Agatha wants to take Wanda's powers because she feels that she's undeserving of those powers and we have this scene where Wanda takes a car and <laughs> throws it at Agatha with her powers of course and it goes into a house and we think that Agatha has been injured or will be underneath the car, but when Wanda goes over to the car to see what is there, we get a fun little nod to the Wizard of Oz. So we see Agatha's boots, but Agatha isn't there, it's just her boots. And then we have White Vision who comes into play and he's now inside the hex and he flies up to Wanda and Wanda's like, Vision? And he comes up to Wanda and puts his hands on her face and then starts squeezing. And he's basically trying to crush Wanda's skull. And that was pretty intense. And then we have the actual Vision who comes in and basically tackles the white Vision and saves Wanda. And the real Vision comes and Wanda's like, this is our home, we've gotta fight for it. And then so Wanda is trying to figure out where Agatha has went and she goes to the like town square and we find Agatha on top of a building in front of this billboard which I don't think has any significance but we see that she's on top of this building and she starts talking to Wanda and they talk about the Dark Hold, which is the book that was in Agatha's basement. So that answers the question of what the book had to do with whatever. So it's called The Dark Hold, and I guess it talks the story of magic and witches. And there's a part in this book that talks about the Scarlet Witch and how the Scarlet Witch is destined to destroy the world and that she is more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme, who just happens to be Doctor Strange. So Wanda is one of the most powerful people in the MCU right now. And so all of the characters that we've seen throughout the series ha are in this town square, and Agatha breaks Dottie from the illusion, and Dottie's like, I, Wanda, please, my daughter is about the same age as your boys, they can be friends if that's the storyline that you like, and basically we find out that Dottie is nobody, that they set Dottie up to be an important person, and it was a red herring, which is kind of disappointing. After the scene, we also cut to Monica and... Pietro and Monica's like, who are you? What are you doing? She happens to find a electric bill in his man cave that they're in and basically it says that the name is Ralph Boner, which I could have done without the Boner joke. I think that it didn't really fit with this, but we also find out that this is an actor who has been cast in this role, like a literal actor who has been cast in this role to be under control of Agatha to mess with Wanda, I guess. So that was also very disappointing, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So then we go back to the town square, and Agatha ends up releasing everyone from like the illusion that they're in, and they all start to swarm Wanda. And Wanda's like freaking out. She's like, what is going on? I didn't mean to hurt anyone. I Everything is okay. And they're like, we'd rather die than be a part of this illusion anymore. And 
And so they start to charge Wanda and she gets overwhelmed and basically shoots a bunch of power out of her and it goes into the form of collars that are choking these people and Agatha's like, well, you're gonna kill these people. And she's like, no, 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 I'm not. And she calls off the powers and then we see her open. She expels a lot of energy and she opens the hex for these people to be able to escape because it was never her intention to actually hurt these people. And since the hex is open, Hayward sees this as his chance to get in. So Hayward and a whole bunch of sword agents go into the hex and meet at the town square. And we have Billy and Tommy who have now came to the town square and we have the real Vision who has come to the town square and Basically, Wanda's like, Billy, Tommy, you need to take care of the military. Vision takes care of White Vision, and then Wanda and Agatha go at it. And Agatha starts absorbing Wanda's powers. Every time Wanda shoots energy or whatever out at Agatha, she's absorbing that. And we saw her do this in the flashback to Salem when she was being tied to the stake and all the witches were trying to do that, she was absorbing their energy. So that's what she is doing to Wanda. And while this is happening, we see the twins who are taking care of the military and we have Tommy who goes and messes with all of the sword agents because of his super speed, he can go and change things around. And Hayward comes out of his vehicle and with a gun and basically tries to shoot the twins. Luckily, Monica is there and she steps in front of them and gets shot, but she has powers now, so the bullets go through her, slow down, and then fall. But one of the bullets is not caught and we see that Billy has stopped it with his powers. And when Hayward realizes that that's not working, he gets back into his vehicle and then we see Darcy come in with the funnel cake truck and she basically rams into Hayward's vehicle. So Hayward is stuck in the driver's seat and she basically just says, see you in jail. So we go to Real Vision and White Vision and they have been battling this entire time and they find themselves in the library, which I believe is from the second episode. They were still in black and white when they were there and it was like a whole bunch of the guys from the town. But Vision and White Vision are in there and basically White Vision says he has an imperative to, he's been programmed to kill regular Vision. And he was like, well, they, regular Vision does this like kind of thought experiment with Vision, White Vision and it basically turns out in, so basically it ends with Vision, the real Vision giving White Vision all the memories that, of everything that has happened because they're like the same person basically. And so White Vision ends up flying away because he's very overwhelmed with all this information and doesn't really know what to do because he is robotic. So it's all about logic and not really these human emotions and things like that. We then go back to Wanda and Agatha and Wanda comes up behind Agatha and does the little magic to kind of go into Agatha's mind. She takes her back to Salem and that moment where all the witches have been drained of their powers and Agatha is still on like the stake and so All the witches start to come back. They're like zombie witches now and they're all like you're the Sorcerer Supreme to Wanda and it basically backfires because Wanda then gets tied to the stake and during this we see that Wanda gets a power crown so it's not a physical crown, but it's a energy of power that turns into the headdress that Scarlet Witch is famous for. And so we get out of this. One day Agatha are having a battle over Westview. So they're in the sky, they're having a battle. Agatha's like, I want your powers. Wanda's like, you can take them. I never wanted them to begin with. And so we see Wanda start shooting energy at Agatha 
and we think that she's missing some of these, uh, but every time she keeps getting her powers absorbed and we can see that certain parts of Wanda's body are starting to change. So her arms and hands are turning black. Then we see her face starts getting shrunken in like she is having her powers absorbed. And then once the last thing has happened, we find out that Agatha has been lying to Wanda and saying that once the spell has been cast, you can't change it. And basically she had been saying, give me your powers, I'll change the spell and make everything right. And we basically find out that that was a lie. So then Agatha tries to do like the death blow of Wanda and tries to shoot powers out at her, but she can't. And that is when Wanda's master plan has come alive. And we see a shot of Wanda floating in the sky, all sunken in, and looks like she's been absorbed. But then behind her, we start to see something. And then the camera goes behind Agatha, and we see something else. And we find out that Wanda, part of the thing, we thought that she was missing Agatha for whatever reason, but she was actually shooting powers to cast spells of runes on the hex. So when you have a room that has runes on it that have been cast by a witch, you can't enter that witch. It's a protection spell, basically. And so Agatha's like, oh no. And this is where Wanda starts absorbing back the powers of Agatha that Agatha took from her, and maybe potentially some of Agatha's powers, because we do see some purple energy there, but we're not 100% sure. But this is the moment where we get the full Scarlet Witch with her new costume, which is really, really nice. Elizabeth Olsen looks amazing in it. It's, I thought it was a like a dress at first, but it turns out that it is like a bodysuit with legging type things. She has a train, which is what made me assume that it was a dress from the silhouette. She's got glove, fingerless gloves, and she has a headdress. So it was it was pretty great seeing that and seeing how good Elizabeth Olsen looked in that. It was amazing. So we then are back onto the ground level and Agatha is just sitting there basically and Wanda comes down and they're talking and she, Agatha's like, what are you going to do with me now? And Wanda's like, well, I'm going to leave you in the role that you cast for yourself, the nosy neighbor. So Wanda basically turns Agatha back into Agnes, and Agnes is then set to live in Westview as a nosy neighbor, and that's pretty crazy. There was rumors along like the beginning of, maybe before or a little bit after the season started, where Westview was actually going to be a prison for witches, and I think that that was kind of interesting that they brought that in there. So it's basically that Westview is now Agatha's prison. So Wanda then decides that she's going to get rid of the Hex. So she starts the process of getting rid of the Hex and her, Vision, Billy and Tommy all go back to their house. And we can see that the Hex is starting to slowly close more and more and things are changing. While they get to the house, they tuck the boys in, and Wanda and Vision go downstairs. And this is probably one of the saddest things that happens, where we see the line of the hex, and it's coming, and it goes to the house, and that is when Vision and the twins disappear, because they can't exist outside of this hex, and the house disappears, and it's just a frame now. And so Wanda is now all alone again, but she's more at peace this time because she had this, she knows what is happening. And she then goes to the town square where everyone still is. Monica is there and Monica says, the people in the town will never know what Wanda sacrificed to bring them back. And Monica is like, I think that I would have done the same thing if I could to see my mom again. And so Wanda basically turns back into her Scarlet Witch 
costume and flies away and that is the end of the episode. But this episode does have two post credit scenes. In the first post credit scene we have Jimmy Woo who has been outside the hex the whole time. He comes in and he basically takes over the evidence collection and things like that and during this we have some random agent come up to Monica and say I need to see you in the theater so we can talk privately. And so Monica and this agent go to the theater and the agent transforms into a scroll and basically says that there's somebody that was a friend of Monica's mom who wants to meet with her and they specifically say he. So it is a male and she's like, where do they want to meet? And she just points up so they want to meet in space. And then we have a final credit sequence where we have Wanda in a cabin and I don't know where it is. I thought that it might be, it's in the middle of the mountain somewhere and she's in a cabin, she's all by herself. She's in like this white tracksuit almost and she's sitting on the front porch drinking coffee or something like that. And she walks into the house and we go past where she has walked into another room and we see the Scarlet Witch version of Wanda who is now reading The Darkhold and she's in like a similar pose to what Doctor Strange was in and as she's reading it she hears disembodied voices saying mommy come help us and it's Billy and Tommy who are saying help and then that's where the episode ends. I'll first start off by saying that this was in my opinion perfect TV. It was peak television. It was a perfect show for what it was worth. I think that there were a lot of issues with it. I think that having it as a weekly release has pretty much given people a lot of time to theorize, which I'm guilty of too. I've seen it all over the internet and basically a lot of the things that people thought were important basically ended up being red herrings. And so the daddy thing, I think that that was disappointing that it ended up being nobody. Um, she just ended up being a random person in this town and she, I don't know, I just didn't like that. I think the worst offense was the Evan Peters situation where he was cast, he was Pietro who is Quicksilver and he played Pietro in the Fox movies and so a lot of people thought that they were bringing the Fox X-Men in and they, it was basically wasted potential because why would you cast a big name like Evan Peters to do this role that turned out to be nobody and probably won't ever show back up. I think that that was something that was a major mistake. Some of the unanswered questions we still have, um, we never found out who Jimmy Woo's witness protection person was, so that basically fell by the wayside. One of the great things that came out of this series was that, especially my love for Wanda has gotten a whole lot more. Like, I love Wanda. Wanda is great. And this show just proved how good Wanda actually is. And a lot of that has to do with Elizabeth Olsen and how great of an actress she is. I, we also got a great new villain slash potential anti-villain um, with Agatha. I think that I'm glad that Agatha didn't die so then she can potentially pop up another time because I think Catherine Hahn was great, made Agatha a great character, so I'm really happy with that. But that is it for this review. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of WandaVision as a whole because this is now the last episode. I was going to do a review every week of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but I think I might take a break since these videos didn't do very well. I am going to take a break from the Marvel things. I think I might come back with Loki because I think Loki is going to be a lot more along the lines of WandaVision than... Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think that's going to be a little bit more classic MCU, so I'm not too worried about that. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to be, please hit that subscribe button down below and give this video a like if you liked it. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day. Bye.